Hi and welcome to GFact. Today I'm going to explain the indexes in SQL Server. So let's begin. In front of me I have a table which contains a list of products. On the right side I have a query where I want to get all the products where ID is equal to 2. This query is not very efficient because the table doesn't have any indexes. So I will do a full scan for this table. I can improve the performance of this query if I create a cluster index on the ID column. As you can see the data now is ordered by the ID column in an ascending order. You can have only one cluster index on a specific table. The reason is the data is ordered on the disk by that cluster index. The query from above will be very efficient because the SQL Server will scan the table via that cluster index that I created, so it will give me the result right away. On the right side I have another query where I want to get all the products where name is equal to Fanta. This query is not efficient again because it's not searching via the cluster index, so it will do a full scan for this table. I can have only one cluster index on a specific table. If I want to improve the performance of this query, I need to create a non-cluster index. I chose to create the non-cluster index on the name column. What will happen under the hood? SQL Server will create another table. You will not be able to see this table. This will contain the non-cluster index and the primary key. When you create the primary key on a specific table, it will automatically create a cluster index on it. If I'm running the query on the right side, the results will come from the index directly and not from the original table. If I try to run another query on this table, for example, I want to get the name and the price, where name is equal to Fanta. What will happen under the hood, SQL Server will reuse the index that I already created, but with a twist. It will try to join the data that is stored in that index with the original table via the primary key. That's why the primary key is stored with the non-cluster index. In this situation, it will try to find the Fanta in the index and then it will join by the primary key with the original table to get the price. I can improve the performance of this query if I include the price column with the index. What will happen under the hood is the price will be attached to the index. So if I'm running the same query again, the data will come directly from the index. There is no additional join between the index and the original table. You can also create non-cluster indexes with a WHERE condition. In this situation I created the non-cluster index for the name column. I will include also the price, but I will filter only for those products where the color is black. In this situation, if I'm running the query from below, the data will still be efficient, because the entire result will come directly from the index. If I change the color, to be blue, then I will need to search in the original table. So let's recap what we learned. If you have too many indexes on a specific table, the performance will decrease for insert, update and delete. You can have only one cluster index on a specific table. You can create no cluster indexes with include or where condition, as you can see in the examples from below. The column order matters. What that means is it is important if you want to create a non-cluster index for two columns, for example for color and price, it matters which one is the first. You can also specify if the column should be ordered in ascending or descending order. If you found this video very helpful, please let me know in the comment section below and give it a thumbs up. See you next time.